In this video, we're going to look at five different math books for five different subjects that typically you would study beyond calculus. So these are math subjects that you would explore or maybe take a class in well after taking a calculus class. The first one here is Linear Algebra by Larry Smith. So Linear Algebra is typically a class that you take after taking some calculus, and it's not a particularly difficult class normally. Um, the biggest problem with this particular book is that my copy is falling apart. So I bought a used copy and this is what I got. These are the contents and it starts off at a really good pace. Most people can actually pick this book up and start reading it. Even if you haven't had calculus, you might be able to understand and process a lot of this information. It does get harder, but it starts off pretty simple. So it starts off with vectors in the plane and in space, vector spaces, examples of vector spaces, subspaces, linear independence and dependence. I should mention that you probably want to have some proofwriting experience uh, before jumping into linear algebra, especially a book like this. There are lots of computational problems in this book, but there's also like a lot of proof-based exercises. So I think it's kind of important that you have some proof writing you know, behind you. Here's an example of a proof. Let V be a finite dimensional vector space with bases A sub one through A sub N. Then any vector A and V may be written uniquely as a linear combination. And they go through the proof here. Overall, I think this is a pretty good book on linear algebra. My biggest problem is that my copy is falling apart. A much more challenging subject is partial differential equations. And this is a book that is often used to learn the subject. This is actually the book that I used uh, when I took the class in college as an undergraduate. So typically to study partial differential equations, you want to have some calculus behind you. And you also want to have some ordinary differential equations. A lot of the techniques that you use in a regular differential equations class, you'll use when you study partial differential equations. This book is a good size too. It's very well made, it's very well printed. Um, much better quality than the book we looked at before. Um, just really, really good quality. Let me just give it a whiff. Ah, oh, yeah, smells awesome. Here are the contents, and I've read big portions of this book. I have spent a lot of time working through the exercises in this book, and some of the exercises are really long. When you get into a subject like partial differential equations, the problems can get pretty insane pretty quickly. If you thought ordinary differential equations was you know, challenging and had really long problems, wait till you get to PDEs. It does have answers and hints, by the way, to the exercises, but I have found some typos in the answers in this book. This is a book worth having, but it's not like a perfect book. It's really hard to find a book which is you know, perfect in any way, and I don't even know if it exists, but it's a pretty good book, and you can probably get a copy for not too much. Uh, I bought my copy, I believe, brand new uh, at the time, so I paid a little bit more for it. Here's a subject that really doesn't get discussed much. It's called differential geometry, and a lot of schools don't even offer a course on differential geometry. This is the one by Grostein. So what do you need to learn differential geometry? Well, here the author tells us, no technical knowledge on the part of the reader is assumed beyond the fundamentals of calculus including partial differentiation and the elements of solid analytic geometry. This does not mean that other tools are not employed at times. It is impossible to write on differential geometry without using the theory of differential equations, and certain theorems from the theory of functions are occasionally necessary if the treatment is to attain an aspect of rigor. But the precaution is taken always to state precisely the facts which are being assumed, so that the reader may not be hampered in his pursuit of the main line of thought. Kind of fun to look at the person who owned the book before me. They had some really straight lines and they underlined. They must have used a ruler to underline everything uh, in the book. So they carefully went through this and they made all kinds of like little arrows and comments and underlinings. This is a book that is way beyond calculus. So this is a book on real analysis. And this book is so famous, it has a nickname. It's called Papa Rudin, and it's called Real and Complex Analysis, and it was written by Walter Rudin. I'm gonna open it up so you can look at it. And this is a book that you would use in graduate school. So your first year in graduate school, you would take a course on analysis, and this is an example of a book 
that you might use. This is considered a very advanced book. Most students who read a book like this uh, do not understand it. Again, typically you would have a math degree before you even you know, tackle a book like this, but that's not a reason I think to you know, be afraid of it. I always think it's fun to jump into stuff even if it doesn't make any sense because you never know, some of it might make sense and when you revisit it later, you'll say, oh yeah, I remember reading about that. I have some vague idea of that concept or some idea of how that proof works, but I never really understood it. And then when you see it again, the second time, it kind of comes back and it really kind of helps clarify your thinking. This is the beginning of the book. This is undoubtedly the most important function in mathematics. It is defined for every complex number z by the formula. Then he goes on to say that the series one converges absolutely for every z and converges uniformly on every bounded subset of the complex plane. Thus, exp is a continuous function. Really cool, and he goes on and talks about it a little bit more here. So you do have to know some mathematics. Even from the beginning, it's assuming that you know what all of this means. I think anyone who studies math should have a copy of this book eventually. Uh, it just belongs in a math library. It's a classic and Again, it's real and complex analysis. It's the one by Rudin. This next book was actually recommended to me by a former professor that I worked with. I did an independent study long ago and one of the professors I was working with suggested that I get this book. So I went online and I bought this book. It's called Concepts in Abstract Algebra and it's by Charles Lansky. And this book is really different uh, from other abstract algebra books because it has uh, proofs and they're extremely detailed. Let's just look at the contents here, just to show you the contents briefly. So it's got a lot of stuff that you're not going to see in other abstract algebra books. Yeah, there's more here, structure theorems, some interesting topics in here. And again, the proofs are very, very different. And then here are the rest of the contents. Let me show you an example of a proof so you see what I mean. So here's a proof on subrings. It says, let A sub I be subrings of a ring R. So you have a collection of subrings. Then the intersection is a subring. And if those subrings are a chain under inclusion, then the union is also a subring. So he goes to the proof and you can see the detail here in the proof. And it's the same throughout. Look at this proof here. Look at all of this detail. So it's not something that you would typically see in a lot of books. It has a lot of advanced topics too. It even has a section on algebraic geometry, which I think is really cool. So there's all kinds of mathematics in this book that you will see that you won't see in other textbooks. Yeah, wow, look at that. So those are five books on five different subjects beyond calculus. And I wouldn't say that these are like the best books in the world or anything. I just wanted to make a quick video to show you five different books on five different subjects. I think the one on PDEs is, is worth owning. I feel like it's not a perfect book, but it's a pretty good book and I spent a lot of time reading it. I'll try to leave uh, links in the descriptions uh, to all of these books. The one on differential geometry uh, is also pretty good. If I can find it and it's still in print, I'll also leave a link. This one is an absolute classic. Again, this one is Real and Complex Analysis by Rudin. He also has uh, another book. Um, it's called Principles of Mathematical Analysis. And that one is called Baby Rudin. And that one basically has like undergraduate level real analysis, advanced calculus type stuff. It talks about like uniform convergence. Whereas this one has like, you know, measure theory and other uh, graduate level topics that you would typically see uh, as a first year as a first year graduate student. Um, this is a very hard subject. Other books that are good on this subject would be the ones uh, by Royden or uh, the one by Folland is also uh, an excellent book. The Concepts book uh, is an abstract algebra book and it's pretty good, very unique in terms of the proofs. Um, if you can find it at a good price, I think it's worth having. I have tons of abstract algebra books because I spent a lot of time studying the subject. And this one again is very, very unique. And this one here, <laughs> which I really wish my copy was in better condition, uh, is the one by Larry Smith. And I mean, look at that. I, I just, it's just really sad, but maybe someday I'll get a new copy or just make do with what I have. Anyways, 
I hope this video has been enjoyable. Just wanted to make a quick random video to show you five random math books and they're all, they're all okay. I would say that none of these are absolutely amazing, but I still think they're worth having. Good luck.